I was wondering this morning if you're sleeping in my bed. Pardon? You see, I believe you are. We rented Mr. Brown's half the house this summer while you were journeying in Scotland. Which room do you sleep in? The one overlooking the back garden. That was my bed. For proof, pull it from the wall and by the pillow you'll find a figure I drew with pinholes. Is the figure you? It's a fairy princess. Should I be feeding her? She refuses to eat. Would you teach me poetry? I'd, I'd like to understand. I don't know how to begin. And it's three to the right. My dearest lady, I'm now at a very pleasant cottage window, looking onto a beautifully hilly country, with a view of the sea. The morning is very fine. I do not know how elastic my spirit might be, what pleasure I might have in living here if the remembrance of you did not weigh so upon me. Ask yourself, my love, whether you are not very cruel to have so entrammeled me, so destroyed my freedom. For myself, I know not how to express my devotion to so fair a form. I want a brighter word than bright, a fairer word than fair. I almost wish we were butterflies and lived but three summer days. Three such days with you I could fill with more delight than fifty common years could ever contain. John. I was at wait for ten days, Brown, with you encouraging me to stay on and get well. John, easy. Now, you write Miss Braun a Valentine card. Are you lovers? John, is that the truth? You easy. sent a card, Charles. You have the income to marry where I have not. Did you accept it, Miss Braun? John, I sent that Valentine. It was only a jest. And who makes a religion of flirting. John, she is what? A poetry scholar it's one weekend. What? A military expert the next? It is a game. It is a game to her. She collects it. There is a holiness to the heart's affections. No, you nothing of that. Believe me, it's not pride. Mr. Brown.